above all powers, above all What I'm going to do is I'll be here. Good morning, church. Y'all ready to put your worship on? Uh, Matt's out today, and so Dulcie's going to be helping us uh, for her first to kind to kind of lead. And uh, we're excited about that. I've already heard a special treat that what they've got in store. But I want to cover a quick, a couple of quick things uh, with y'all uh, before we start that you just need to know about. Um, you know, every year, um, this time of year, uh, you hear about the pastor moves. Matter of fact, at two o'clock today. All the pastor moves will be announced. Like, you know, I've told y'all Bridget's retiring and who's going all to steal. So I just wanted to let y'all know that y'all are getting a new pastor. His name is um, Elvis Dowdy. <laughs> <laughs> and he ain't nothing but a hound dog. Wow. wow. No, no kidding. I am starting my fifth year with y'all, and I'm excited about that. And uh, so it's awesome. I, I'm super excited. But anyway, I just had to do that. Y'all know me. I just had to do that. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over to our capable praise team and let them lead us in the first song, and then I'll have a prayer. All right. Good morning, y'all. How y'all feeling? Y'all ready to worship? Yeah. All right. Let's go. you for this day. We ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would make yourself known in this place as we come to worship the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As cruel as a grave, shame is a robber, and he's come to take my name. Love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. Oh, shame is a prison. As cruel.
gonna hold my body down. And 
trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. I will see how great, how great is our this morning how about that Jesus this morning man y'all can have a seat well it's good to see everybody here today and as we go to the Lord in a time of prayer I want y'all to feel free to lift up your praises and your prayer requests as you hear me make that time available so let's pray together father we just praise your holy name for you alone are God And Lord, you created all that is. And in your grace, you have shown who you are through your son Jesus. Throughout time, you have shown humanity your great faithfulness to us. Even when we fail you, you always remain steadfast. And for your grace, we praise you. Lord, I praise you for the sense uh, of this praise team helping us to lift our spirits this morning. I praise you, God, for taking care of me all of my life. I praise you, God, that my mom and dad uh, raised me to know about you. I praise you, God, that you brought me up in a church that taught me about you. But God... We need to take time every so often just to praise you. And so before I go any further on this prayer, I want to open up time for people to praise you. Anyone? Yes. Any other praises this morning? <laughs> Thank you.
Yes. Yes, we praise you for that. Yes. And Lord, we want to praise you for the gift of the Christian church where we can gather together. And Father, because we are a Christian church and we believe that God, you hear our prayers, you hear our concerns that we take time each week to lift up people that are on our hearts that we ask you to please consider. And so now, Lord, we take time in this prayer to do just that. others yes 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 father you've heard our prayer concerns this morning now lord i just ask that you uh, turn our attention to your word and lord that the words you give me to say will be uplifting and help us to realize that Easter Sunday is not just one Sunday, that really every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, Holy Spirit, we dedicate this time to hearing from you. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'm going to have some selected verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you'd like to read alone, along. Now let me remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then and still do now, for your faith is built on this wonderful message. And this is the good news that saves you if you firmly believe it. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was important and what was also passed on to me. That Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and was raised on the third uh, the day, raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve apostles. But tell me this, since we preach Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there's no resurrection from the dead? For if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless, and your trust in God is useless. And we apostles will be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the dead. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection from the dead. And if there's no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you're still under condemnation for your sins. In that case... All who have believed in Christ perished. And if we have hope in Christ only for this life, we are the most miserable people in the world. If the dead will not be raised, why should we ourselves be continually risking our lives facing death by hour by hour? For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, I face death daily. This is as certain as my pride in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. And there was value, uh, and what value was there in fighting well beasts, those men of Ephesus, if there's no resurrection from the dead? And if there's no resurrection, let's feast and get drunk, for tomorrow we die. But don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrects, cor corrupts good character. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There was a famous movie that we usually watch at Christmas. Uh, it came out in 1946. 
about a, a young uh, a man who had been a really good guy, and he had come on some very hard times. And all these hard times made him thinking, uh, thinking of jumping off a bridge. But then an angel intervenes and jumps off the bridge himself, and so this guy has to jump in to save the angel. Well, conversation ensues, and the guy says, well, it would have been better off if I had just never been born. So the angel sets it up with the good Lord and lets him see what, his, what the world would have been like if he had never been born. To let him see all the impact that he had had on people's lives. And what was the name of the movie? It's a Wonderful Life. You can't go through Christmas without watching that. But you know, it kind of hit me when I was reading this from Paul that that's kind of what he's sort of talking about. He's saying, you know, if there's no resurrection from the dead, then where would we be? We tend to hear a sermon on Easter Sunday and then pastors kind of move on. But you know, this time of year we should be celebrating and focusing on the resurrection of Christ every Sunday. We can't just hear a little 20-minute sermon on it and then forget and move on. So what difference does it make that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Just like George Bailey got to see what life would be like if he had never been. This morning we're going to think about or consider off of what Paul's had to say, what would life be like? If Jesus Christ was still in the grave. Paul says first our faith would be useless. Think about it. The Christian faith is based solidly on the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say if that's not been the case there's really no Christianity. And when you think about it. If Jesus was still in the grave, there might be some religion that's called Jewish something, Jesusness or something, but it really wouldn't be called Christianity because Christianity, the Christ, is a word meaning Messiah. And we understand that the Messiah came to save us from our sins, right? He died to pay for our sin, but he was raised from the dead to show us that we had salvation. To let us know that Jesus Christ was no poser. He didn't fake it. And I alluded to this last week. For Paul says in Romans 1, verse 4, Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the Son of God when God powerfully raised him the dead by the means of the Holy Spirit. He died to accept the wrath of God And he was raised to show that we have salvation. So therefore, if he's not been raised, why would we trust in him? I mean, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't trust somebody that's still in the grave to bring my salvation. Now, we've all heard this before, but I just got to say it. You know, when you think about the other major world religions, Islam, Muhammad is still in the grave. Buddhism, uh, Buddha's in the grave. If you even go to uh, Mormonism, Joseph Smith is still in the grave. But Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And so that shows us that our faith means something. Also, if Jesus Christ had not been raised from the grave, our, our hope would be useless. Have y'all ever had what's called an exercise in futility? Uh, Let me give you some examples. You're wanting to lose weight, but while you're running, you are eating a whole bag of Reese's peanut butter cups. (laughs) Or, mothers know this, trying to sweep the kitchen when kids are running in and out of the house. Or clipping coupons for hours to find out that they were all out of date. Those are exercises in futility. 
But Paul is telling us an exercise of futility would be to even be a Christian if Jesus was still in the grave. Because if Jesus never rose from the dead and he was never the son of God, then that means we're still under God's condemnation and that we would have no hope because all we would have is either what atheists think, that a black, you know, just nothingness, or condemnation. And you think about people in our church that have gone through bad sickness and disease. If Jesus is still in the grave, would they really have much hope about trying to maybe get over the disease? I mean, because ultimately when you face something that's going to kill you, your hope is that there's still something after death, right? But if there's nothing after death, then you might as well give up on life. Also, have you ever thought about this? If Jesus was still in the grave, the church would be useless. There would really be no need for the church. And for me, that's a biggie because there are many people, even within our denomination, who do not believe in the bodily resurrection of Christ, yet they want to keep the church going. And I'm like, well, if there's no risen Lord, then why even have the church? Because there's a lot of other uh, entities that do good works. Because the single most important thing the church exists for, while feeding people are important, putting clothes on people are important, being kind is important, but the single most important reason the church exists is to lead people to the saving grace of the risen Lord. And if there's no risen Lord, we might as well pack up and go home because there's no reason to even evangelize. And I want you to think about this question for a minute. If Jesus had never risen, would you be a Christian? And if you say yes, then you've got your Christianity messed up. We don't follow Jesus because he's just a good leader. We follow Jesus because he's the son of God. So, the church will be useless. Also, all the suffering that Christians have gone through since Jesus walked on the earth would be for naught. It would be useless. Think about, we know that the, many of the apostles were killed. We know that Paul was beheaded. We know that men and women were fed to the lions. They were burned at the stake. And even today, Christians are coming under forms of persecution. Some are mild. Some are strong. For example, I was sharing with a men's group uh, I don't know if y'all saw it or not, but there was a movie that came out during Holy Week last week called Unholy by Sony Pictures. And I just saw a couple little of the previews about it. But it was demonic in nature. And I thought, how blasphemous that they would pick this most special week of the year to release a movie that makes fun of the Christian faith. Or I heard that there was an article in the paper that says a lot of people are saying now all Christians are racists because we don't go along with everything the world wants. And that's not racism. Or how about last week on Easter Sunday when some policemen in Canada came in to stop the church from meeting on Easter Sunday. And the pastor stood up and told him to leave because the Canadian Constitution does not allow that to happen. Think about the Christians that have been killed even in other countries. Would it make sense for people called Christians to put up with all that if Jesus is just another person, why do you think Christians are so highly persecuted? Because Satan does not want the true answer that is found in Jesus Christ to be spread into the world. 
And he will do anything he can do to stop it because Satan knows that Jesus kicked his rear end when he rose from the grave and Satan does not like that. And finally, if Jesus is still in the grave, morality is useless. If you've, had, you've all had jobs, and let's think, would you do your job if there was no paycheck? Honestly, would you have went to work every day if you weren't going to get a paycheck? Why? Because we expect something for what we've done. Well, to some degree, that's sort of the way we are about our faith. We know that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. But if we were just going to live under condemnation... Or if after we died, there was nothingness. Why, honestly, why would we love the Lord? If death is all that waits. You see, this belief in the resurrection changes the way we live now. We know we cannot live good and to make it to heaven. But because we trust in a risen, a risen Lord... We want to live as he wants us to live, right? Good and moral lives. But Paul is saying, well, if there's no resurrection of the dead, let's just party. Let's get drunk. Let's have intercourse with who all we want to. Let's shoot up drugs. Let's just gamble. Let's do everything that we can think of because after all, you're going to die and that's it. But if there's a resurrection, and the Lord was raised so you could be raised, then doesn't that change everything? When you think about it, if Jesus had stayed in the grave, our entire world would be different because there would be no Christians to help people to know the love of God. There would be no faith. There would be no hope. There would be no morality. Paul says, don't be fooled by people that say there's no resurrection. He says, ignore people that say stuff like that. Because it is true, he has been raised from the dead. And because of our faith in the risen Lord, we can know we will have a tomorrow. So what difference does it make that Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead? It's made a monumental difference in the last 2,000 years. Lives have been changed like never before. But the biggest question I think we need to ask this morning is what difference does it make in your life? Is your life any different because of the resurrected Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that your son rose from the grave. And let us never take that fact for, for granted. And Lord, we just ask that you help us to prepare as we are about to move into a time of Holy Communion. That you will reach into our hearts and help us to feel and to know you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, Christ shows his love by becoming an humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's spirit. Will you join me in the prayer? Most merciful God, we your church confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ. Where he, we have failed to love one another as he loves us where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your Spirit make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you observe a time of personal confession as I prepare the table?
who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us. He was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now will you join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love fell, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on all and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And by your mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and spirit. And remembrance in these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him up from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread and later revealed himself to over 500 persons. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and upon these gifts from the field and the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of little children, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now you'll notice that we have a new style cup to make it a little easier. If you will peel the bottom part that has the piece of bread, put it in your hand, and join me in saying, this is the body of Christ given for me. This is the body of Christ given for me. If you'll flip it over. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. Lord, what an awesome and perfect thing you've done for us through your son Jesus. And through this special meal, which you have been present with us, we ask now that you prepare us to depart from this worship service, some to go to Sunday school, some to go home, but all of us to go out into the world. Help us to be the, rep the representatives of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Well, I hope that you were blessed today as we've worshiped together and that you will continue to be blessed this week. And now will you receive a blessing? May the God of hope fill you with all joy so that you may overflow with hope now and forever because Jesus is alive. Amen.